Chloe Lane ending that report there and uh, one man who knows only too well the difficulty balancing a high profile career while coping with mental illness is former footballer Clark Carlisle. With an illustrious career as a player for Leeds United and QPR, Clark hid his depression from his teammates for nearly 20 years. Last year he hit rock bottom and tried to kill himself. Well today he was a special guest at a conference organised by Jersey Employment Trust and Mine Jersey and he joins us now in the studio to talk about his extraordinary journey but before we speak to Clark here's how his mental illness took him from the top of his profession to his lowest ebb. As a professional footballer Clark Carlisle had the world at his feet. A top player for the likes of Burnley and Leeds United he was a successful and well-paid star living out many a young boy's dream and he was intelligent on and off the pitch. It's good to see Sir Alex Ferguson's intent there. A regular pundit on ITV Sport, a contestant on Countdown Carrions. and representing fellow players as PFA chairman. But Clark had been keeping a secret which almost cost him everything. His depression culminated in him trying to take his own life last December when he walked out in front of an oncoming lorry on the A64 near York. Everybody at Hull and I'm sure the whole of football wishes him a speedy recovery and, and let's hope that it's, a, let's hope that it's, it's good news for us in, in the new year. It was good news for Clark as he made a strong recovery and is now determined to support others who may be going through a similar ordeal. And Clark uh, is here with us now. Such a powerful story. Just tell us, back in December last year, how were you feeling at your lowest point? Oh, wow. Uh, that's a, it's an opening gambit and a half, you know. How long have you got? <laughs> it's, uh, I, I've tried to articulate as often as possible, but it will seem, seem nonsensical to anyone who hasn't been in that position where you have overridden the natural instinct to survive. You, you know, it's almost impossible to comprehend what position, what place your mind is in, where death is not not an escape, it is the logical and rational solution to the events and situation that you're in. I'd rationalise that my wife would be better off, my children would be financially secure, my parents would no longer be ashamed or embarrassed of me, and this is all because my, uh, you know, how I was perceiving life, that compass that I was using, was just so, so, uh, gripped in the depths of depression, that that seemed like the logical answer. As you just mentioned, a lot of people who aren't going through it, who haven't been through it, find it impossible to comprehend. How did your family react to your suicide attempt? Oh, wow. Um, you know, it immediately it spikes me with guilt and shame at what I, I had to put my wife through, what I had to put my, my parents, my siblings through. You know, being honest about it with my children, which is imperative for them to understand and be able to be free with their emotions with me. So how was it for my, my family? It was disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting, but they were delighted there uh, by some miracle, by some blessing, I survived. Did they have any inkling about what you were going through? I mean, this was something you kept hidden for, for decades. D did they have any idea, your wife, I well, mean? You know, I, I, my depression was diagnosed in 2010, so I, I'd started to learn about depression at that point. I was taking fluoxetine, 20 mils a day, and I thought that that was the answer. But there's a distinct difference between acknowledging the problem and knowing how to move forward and manage the problem. Uh, and that was what... Uh, I, that, that was what allowed me to get from knowing that I had depression to a second suicide attempt. You know, so how did I hide it from my family? Because if you want an Oscar winning movie, you have a cast of depression sufferers. We're the best actors in the world. You go out into your workplace, into your family and you put your mask on. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, blah, blah, blah. And then it's when you're in that enclosed space, when you're poof, behind closed doors, that's when the fraudulence kicks in. That's when the, the guilt and the shame, the embarrassment, the low self-esteem, that's when you're having that, that dialogue. Because it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. You argue with yourself mm -hmm. uh, and you, you don't enable yourself to get any kind of objectivity on your thoughts. And you talked about hiding it from your family and, and in the workplace as well. And for you, your mm -hmm. workplace was... Um, you know, the football training ground, the football pitch and, and, and the dressing room. 
How did you hide it from your teammates for, for all that long period? That must have been extremely difficult in such a male bravado environment as football. Well, quite to the contrary, you know. It, it's, it, it, you act in, in that alpha male environment anyway because not everyone's an alpha male. Just because someone has, has a natural aptitude and ability to play football doesn't mean they're an alpha male. It means they're talented in, in a specific area. So you pretend to be. You know, and the one thing about the industry of football is that the highs and lows are on a week-to-week -week basis, never mind a year-to-year -year basis. So if I am going through a low time and, and I want to drink myself into an escape, the fact that we lose a game is a fantastic opportunity to do so. And it doesn't look like I'm doing anything different to anyone else. You know, so it's, it's no one else's responsibility to have known what was going on in my life. How could they have known if I didn't tell them. Um, you describe what happened to you last December as a turning point in your life and that a lot of, you've taken a lot of positives from it. What, what do you mean by that? Um, taken a lot of positives from it. <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, hallelujah, I am here to sit here in this chair and converse with you and relay my experiences because I know from experience, I know I, I'm analogous about football, but football's a microcosm of, of wider society. You know, I, I know that there are more sufferers in the dressing room because I've been there with them. I know because I presented a documentary about it and they flooded me with responses. But you factor that out to the one in four in society, which again, is so far under the mark because there are so many people living in ignorance. I had depression for 10 years before it was diagnosed and I didn't know I had a problem. I just thought I was misbehaving. I just thought that I couldn't deal with certain situations. It wasn't, it was because I was depressed. Mm. And there's a, a huge portion of sufferers out there who don't actually know that there's something that they're dealing with. So my positives coming out of here are that I'm well today. And, and you now want to help others. You've been at a conference exactly in, in Jersey today. What has been the key message from your perspective to come out of that? Uh, the key message today, uh, what, what were, uh, really encouraged me today was the appetite. Uh, not only of Jet and what they're doing, but the, you know, the organisations that were there to try and um, educate themselves about the abilities of, of people with mental health issues and the fact that they're no different from any other employee. So uh, it was wonderful to, to get across to them that, you know, work is available for all. And just because I've got a, a mental health issue, it can be managed. It's great to hear and uh, good luck with your future work. Clark Carlisle, thanks very much for joining us. What an inspiration. And as Clark says, uh, the most important thing for anyone with mental health problems is not to suffer in silence. Yeah, there's lots of help and advice for you on our website about, uh, for example, our partner charity Mind, who are there to offer available support. And uh, all the contact details for them and for Mind Guernsey are on our website, itv.com slash channel.